So here's the problem. I have a relatively simple distance prescription and because I'm way over 50 I also have a near or a reading add correction as well. TUSA do a range of distance correction single vision lenses for plus and minus corrections and they also do bifocal lenses for those of us that need a reading ad. The problem with the reading ad lenses is they're a bit too low in the mask and it's pretty hard to look through them comfortably to look at your gauge or your computer or your camera. If you look at the red dots on the mask image that's where your correct position would be for the centre of a lens if you're looking at near vision for your gauges etc. So you can see the lenses are far too low. So then if you buy the distance prescription lenses that's great if you want to look into the distance but pretty useless if you want to look at your gauges computer or of course your camera. So here's the project. We take our existing plano or flat to dive mask lenses and we bond to them the lenses that we need for distance, intermediate and near vision or just distance and near vision depending on how we want to configure the mask. The way we're going to do it is we buy individual trial lenses, the type of lenses that the optometrist uses when he tests your eyes and we pop out the glass lens and then we'll either use it complete or cut it to shape and then bond it to the TUSA lens. Let's have a quick look at some basic lens forms. Plus lenses are always thicker in the middle than they are at the edges and minus lenses are thinner in the middle than they are at the edges. That makes them very easy to identify. The trial lenses you can buy online as individual lenses or if you buy a complete inexpensive set are usually plano one side with the curve on the other side. So what we'll be doing is bonding the plano side of our purchased lens to the inside of the TUSA dive mask. Let's take a quick look at what some of the basic optician's trial lenses actually do. So here's a plus eight diopter lens and you can see it magnifies. This is a minus eight diopter lens and you can see it makes things smaller. Here's a plus eight cylindrical lens or a plus eight sill lens and that's used to correct astigmatism as is this minus eight cylindrical lens. Finally let's look at a prism lens and this is basically used to correct for squint. For this project we can really only deal with a prescription that is relatively simple so if you have a reasonable or a lot of cylindrical correction or any prism then this project really isn't for you. Most prescriptions will look pretty similar to mine with a right eye distance intermediate and near prescription and then a left eye distance intermediate and near prescription. The add section is the correction required for intermediate and near vision on top of your existing distance correction. Let's take a quick look at the three types of spectacle lens. On the top the progressive or very focal lens. In the middle the first project will be the bifocal lens with distance and near correction and then we'll try a trifocal lens which has got distance intermediate and near correction. So here I've written my spherical correction on top of each of the three lens types and as I mentioned before I'm ignoring the cylindrical correction because we can't achieve that in this project. 
So now looking at the bifocal lens and my prescription, the distance correction is plus two sphere, I'm ignoring the sill, and the near vision should be plus 4.25, which is the distance correction plus the plus 2.25 near add, giving us 4.25 diopters for near vision. In order to achieve a compromise between intermediate and near vision underwater, I'm going to reduce the near vision prescription by half a diopter on this eye to 3.75 diopters, and I'm going to reduce the other eye also by half a diopter. Before we start, let's just take a quick look at the pros and cons for the project. It's not for the faint-hearted, but it is very interesting and great fun, and it works. And more to the point, it's relatively inexpensive to create your own custom prescription dive mask that can be reconfigured if your prescription changes. Simply by removing the lenses we've already bonded and replacing them with your new prescription lenses, depending on what's required. So here's the equipment we'll need. A magic marker, some double-sided tape, a steel rule, a glass cutting instrument, some wet and dry paper to tidy up the cut edges of the lenses, isopropyl alcohol to make sure everything's clean and some cotton rag to remove any residues of the isopropyl alcohol, then some Loctite super glue glass, We'll need to make up some cutting jigs and mounting jigs for the lenses. Egg boxes are very useful to keep your lenses in the correct positions and to make sure nothing gets muddled up. If you've got any scrap glass, that's really useful to practice the bonding technique. And then some thinners to undo any bonding that goes horribly wrong. All you need to do is soak the bonded lenses in thinners for 24 hours and they will slide apart. A Stanley blade knife is very useful for clearing up any excess adhesive. The first job is to get a trial lens out of its trial lens holder, which is usually plastic. And actually that's quite easy. You can just fold back the plastic either by hand or using a pair of pliers very carefully and the lens will pop out. The important thing is to get familiar with identifying the flat and the curved surface of the lens as it's vitally important you bond flat to flat in the final stages. If you're going to be cutting lenses in half then there are several ways of doing this. One is to mark the centre of the lens and then use a steel rule to score the lens prior to breaking it. Um, the better way is to create a lens holding jig marked up for either the centre of the lens or if you wanted the intermediate segment to be able to mark and break off to create your intermediate segment sliver. There's lots of help available on the internet on how to break or how to cut and break lenses and glass. I found an old tile breaker that worked fantastically for giving me reasonably good breaks on my trial lenses. Once you've broken your lens, you'll have some fairly sharp edges which need to be cleaned up using various grades of wet and dry. Once you've done this, it'll look a lot smarter and be a lot safer to handle. Now we're getting to the really fun stuff, and if it goes horribly wrong, it doesn't matter. You can simply dissolve the bond by placing your lens assembly in thinners for 24 hours. So now for the exciting stuff. We've got the Tusa original lens in the lens jig. We have our cut lenses clean and polished on the edges. Put a little bit of double-sided tape on the curved surface 
and then use a bolt head or a screw so you've got something to handle the lens with and avoid getting yourself all stuck together with the super glue. Then we have to apply the super glue which is quite tricky because you want to try and avoid as many bubbles as you can otherwise um, you'll get a fairly unpleasant bonded fix between the lens and the two original lens. It'll take a while for you to get your technique right and do as many practices as you can. If it goes wrong, as I've said before, don't panic, simply soak the lens assembly in thinners for 24 hours and they will slide apart and you can start all over again until you get it just the way you want it. Having a well-made and well-marked up jig will make the placement and alignment of lenses a lot easier. Once your lenses are bonded, and I to do them one at a time, as to do all of the lenses in one go can be a little bit tricky, but once they're bonded, don't worry about overspill of glue. It can be wiped away and cut away after several hours, and you can clean it all up and it'll look pretty good. So you can see here I've created two different sets of lenses for my dive mask. One is a distance and a intermediate near compromise, and the second one is my slightly more adventurous trifocal lens. So if you're going to do the project, it's great fun, it's not too expensive, and you've got the flexibility of being able to redo it if it goes wrong or to make adjustments should your um, eyesight correction change. So have fun, happy diving, and if it works for you, then that's great. If not, well, it hasn't cost you too much. Thank you for watching.